Hello guys, this is Snake 75 and I'm going to be focusing on Indiecade East 2014 with this video, which was just this last weekend from February 14th to 16th. I was fortunate enough to go Saturday because I live on Long Island and it was in the city, New York City. I uh, took the train in, went to Queens, managed to struggle with the subway since I never take the subway, you know, but I figured it out. It was pretty fun, uh, not the subway, Indiecade. Uh, once I got into Queens, though, the snow was ridiculous. It was like a blizzard. We're, we keep getting snow here out of nowhere. Well, from the sky. Um, there, there are a bunch of cool games I actually came across. Some that I've never heard of before, some that I have. A lot of them I hadn't, though. So, I got to really broaden my horizons. Is that the phrase? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hop into some of the games, whether you've heard of them or not. They're all, I came across a bunch of cool ones. Some of them were mobile, some of them were Xbox Live. One of them was even, I'm not even going to say a board game, I don't know what to call it. But it was pretty cool, it was played with cards. Uh, yeah, so let's hop into that, okay? One of the first games I played was Glorkian Warrior, The Trials of Glork, which is sort of like Galaga, you run back and forth. I was playing on iOS and Android being developed by Pixel Jam Games. The person who did the music for the game was there, Mark, oh, let me look at his card, Donardo. Pretty cool guy. Um, I know it is also going to be coming to PC and Mac. It's a fun game, you kind of just wander left and right, sort of like a platformer similar to Mario. You shoot up at enemies that fall, and generally you'll get like ships that are going back and forth like crazy, or bosses. Meanwhile, there can also be stuff like exploding basketballs and Tetris blocks falling. So it's a pretty cool game. Next is Extreme Exorcism from Golden Ruby Games, which is a fun free-for-all deathmatch sort of game where you've got a uh, bunch of four different people fighting it out in a haunted factory. And it's the game is currently on Congregate. It, I believe it is coming to PC, although I played it with Xbox controllers at Indicate. Um, Basically, you go. You're bas you, it's a 2D platformer. You run around, jumping around, trying to get weapons and basically shoot each other. These weapons are around the map. It kind of plays like Super Crate Box, which they've even compared it to. Um, basically, the way it works is the winner of each round, their ghost, the next round will be. The, well, they will have a ghost the next round that will basically jump around and do what they did the last round. And that ghost can either kill you or kill other people. And by the end of the match, there are tons of ghosts jumping all over the place like crazy. And it becomes pretty frantic, but it's a pretty fun game. Then there's Allegiance from Heartonomy. Uh, this is similar to Extreme Exorcism in the sense that you have four people, but instead of free-for-all, it's a team deathmatch, two versus two. The way it works is there's a gem on the map, and people... It's a 2D platformer, by the way. You have to jump up and down. You can fly. You can attack. You, everyone is trying to get a hold of a gem that if you hold it for a certain amount of time, you'll get a point, and you basically just want to hold onto that gem as long as possible without losing it. You can fly around, um, you can jump off walls, and you can attack the player who has the gem for the gem to get your team points. Basically, when you have the gem, you can't attack, so you kind of have to fly around, jump around and stuff, and be as quick as possible, as nimble, jump through the platforms and stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in this, you're probably going to have a little bit of a challenge trying to find more on this, because I know I did. But it was a pretty fun game. I played it with an Xbox controller on a uh, team with one other person and against other two other people. I definitely enjoyed it, as I frantically flew around trying to get away from people. Now this one is far from a free-for-all game or a platformer or anything of that nature. It's called What Hath God Wrought. It is being developed by Mike Laserwalker. And here's the trick, the twist. It's played on basically Morse code. I, I don't know what the actual, a telegram, is that the device? I, I don't know. But, uh, or telegraph operator, yeah. Basically, I, I came over just because, I mean, I'm seeing this guy sitting here tapping away. Like, what am I going to think when it's connected to, I think it was connected to like a Nintendo controller connected to a keyboard on a computer, which was interesting. And so I came over, I checked it out. Basically, you're tapping Morse code, and they teach you how to do Morse code with a little cheat sheet on the side. It is not easy. You have to tap pretty quick. Um, the way it works is the year is 1879, and you're basically an operator. Um, it, there's going to be a story to it, but it's currently in the early stages. The name might change, I was told. I would definitely keep an eye on this one because I, I don't really know how exactly you'd get a controller. I know he did mention maybe Kickstarter, but I don't know. Otherwise, though, it looks like a pretty awesome game. 
One of my highlights of Indicate would have to be Crypt of the Necrodancer, which is basically played by Rhythm. It's a, an RPG roguelike. Everything is based on the beat to the song playing in the background, and you can have your own songs play as well. Basically, there's a beat going, and everything in the game moves to that beat. The monsters, you, if you tap and it's not on beat, then you're not going to move, and then you're going to get attacked and die, which is usually bad. Generally, you don't want to die in games. Um, so yeah, that's basically how it works. It's also the beat. It's The music was pretty cool. I enjoyed the game. It had spells. I was able to make it a decent distance. Um, yeah, it definitely seems neat. I'm, I'm all for it. What's also pretty cool is you can also play on a gamepad, a keyboard, or even a DDR pad, because they figured why not. They, um, I know not the day I was there, but at night one of the days they actually had two DDR pads set up and actually two people playing, which means they have some form of co-op, I assume two people. I don't know if it's more or what there. I'd assume it plays just as we would play with a single player, but I don't know, but it does seem pretty cool. To prevent the video from being too long, I'm going to call it there. There were several other games that I have played. I can definitely make another video and talk about those as well if you guys are interested. Um, IndieK was definitely a fun experience for me. I got to check out a bunch of new indie games that I've never heard of before, just like I said in the beginning, you know. Uh, I've never been big on keynotes, I will be honest, so most of the time I spent there was definitely checking out some of the games, just hanging around the show and tell area. But as always, guys, thanks for watching the video. I always appreciate it. Otherwise, this is Snake75, checking out.